Welcome to my second video on the um, AS components of the first chapter of FM1 um, on momentum and impulse. Here we're going to concentrate on the momentum um, before and after a collision. So as you can see there, the total momentum before a collision equals the total momentum after a collision. So in brief, if you um, know about Newton's third law, when two bodies collide, each one exerts an equal and opposite force on the other, as we discussed in the last example of the previous video. So as they're in contact for the same time, um, the exact an impulse on each of equal magnitude, but in opposite directions. So therefore, they cancel each other out and the momentum before will therefore equal the total momentum after an impact. So if you have a look at a couple of um, examples, so the first example we're looking at today is example four. So we have a particle P of mass two kilograms is moving with a speed of three meters per second and particle Q is initially at rest and that has a mass of three kilograms. Um, particle P collides with particle Q and after the collision Q moves off with a speed of seven thirds. So the first thing we need to do is find the speed of P or the velocity of P after the collision. Now, we don't know whether it actually carries on in the same direction or bounces back, so it doesn't matter. As long as you state which direction you are taking, then your answer will relate to that. So if your answer is negative, it actually has rebounded. If it's positive, then it will continue in that direction. Um, it's worth noting again that obviously if it's an answer of greater than seven thirds, then something's gone wrong because it can't obviously collide and go through Q. So it's just worth noting in case you make any arithmetic errors. Um, it's a little self-check to make sure you haven't gone wrong. So the first part is to find this velocity of P after the collision. So we'll use our conservation momentum equation, state which direction you're taking as positive. All of my arrows are going to the right, so it's crazy to make everything negative and we can start. So our total momentum before the collision, I always put my values of before above the particles and after the collision below. So we have our mass times our velocity for P, which is going to be two lots of three plus three lots of zero. Obviously there's no momentum there because Q was initially at rest and that is going to equal two lots of V plus three lots of seven thirds, which is our total momentum after the collision. So we have six equals two V plus seven. So indeed V actually equals minus a half. So therefore um, P has rebounded with a speed or velocity of a half meters per second because obviously the negative there shows that it's in the opposite direction to which we stated in our diagram. Now for part B, we're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse received by P in the collision. So that will be the impulse provided by Q on P in that direction. If I just quickly do a sketch here, just to remind ourselves of the values. Then we can set impulse with our direction to the left as positive and that's going to be the change in momentum so our final velocity is in that direction so that's going to be the mass times by a half minus the initial velocity but obviously the initial velocity was to the right so therefore that is going to be minus three so we're going to have one plus six which is seven newton seconds again because it's changed direction, you can think of it as those two momentums added together rather than perhaps missing that double negative. It's also worth noting there that obviously I could have done the impulse of P on Q um, because the obviously, as we've said already with Newton's third law, the impulse is acting from P to Q and Q to P will be equal to each other. Moving on to a similar example now. So example number five. Here we have two particles again. So we've got particles A and B. A has a mass of two kilograms and B has a mass of four kilograms. They're moving towards each other this time in opposite directions along the straight line. So we have the particles of, sorry, the velocities of A is three 
and they're moving towards each other here. So the velocity of B is two. Um, and we need to find out um, after the collision, the direction of motion at V is reversed. So we know it's going to go in that direction with a velocity of two meters per second. And we need to find the direction and speed of B. So again, we'll just state V in that direction. Whether it carries on or not, we don't know yet. And again, the answer we have will relate to the direction that I've put there. So conservation momentum again, I'm going to take to the right as positive. So everything now relates to that direction. So our initial momentum is going to be two lots of three plus four lots of minus two, because that um, is traveling in the opposite direction to the one I've stated as positive. And that's going to equal the total momentum after the collision. So that's two lots of minus two, because again, two is to the left, plus the way I've written it here, so that would be plus four lots of V. So we have six minus eight, so minus two equals minus four plus four V. So therefore V is going to equal a half meters per second. So again, the motion of B has reversed. So it's now heading to the right. because that value there relates to the direction I've taken as positive. Now for part B, we're looking at the impulse and it actually asks for the impulse of A on B. So therefore I will put the impulse in that direction and it's particle B that we'll be looking at with our equation. So for part B, our impulse is going to be the change in momentum. And obviously we are taking that direction as positive. So our final momentum here, just move up slightly, is going to equal the mass times by the final velocity, which is in the direction to the right. So that's just four times a half minus four times the initial velocity, which is obviously to the left. So that's going to be minus two. So therefore, we're going to have two plus eight. So we have a impulse or an impulse of 10 newton seconds. Now example number six, um, this is a more practical example. We have two particles attached to each end of a string. Um, we are told that initially the particles P and Q of masses eight kilograms and two kilograms, so P and Q there. Um, and we have particle P is projected away from particle Q with a speed of four meters per second. So initially, obviously, Q is at rest. Now, it wants to find the common speed of the particle after the string goes taut. So when the string starts to slack, at the instant it gets to its full length, we have our collision. So it's provided this time by the tension that's in the string when it goes taut. So obviously that is going to try it and pull that one back. So if you like, our impulse on P is going to be pulling it back there. And obviously our impulse on Q is going to be pulling it in that direction. And again, as we've said with Newton's third law, these impulses are obviously going to be equal and opposite to each other. Now, afterwards, this is going to carry on traveling as a common speed. So whatever the speed of P is going to be, the speed of Q is going to be the same. So we therefore know that both particles will be traveling with the same velocity, which we'll just call V. So again, if we look at conservation of momentum, first of all, to find the common speed, I'm gonna to take to the left as positive. So our total momentum before the collision is going to be eight lots of four, plus again, two lots of zero. I'll put it there, obviously, although it's gonna be zero. And that's going to equal eight V plus two V. So in other words, 32 is going to be 10 V, so our common speed after the collision is going to be 3.2 meters per second. Now for part B, that was part A, for part B, it says the magnitude of the impulse transmitted through the string when it goes taut. So again, we can consider either P or Q. 
So as they've done Q in the book, I'll just consider P to show you that it will give you the same answer. So we're going to concentrate on particle P. So the impulse provided is going to be to the right. So we'll take that as positive. So our initial velocity is going to be obviously to the um, left, which is the opposite direction. So therefore, we are going to have eight lots of um, minus 3.2 minus eight lots of minus four. So that's going to be minus 25.6 plus 32, which is going to give us an answer of 6.4 Newton seconds. I'd argue the one they've done in the book is probably the simpler way of working that one out. Um, but just to show you, obviously, that um, they will be equal and opposite each other. So you can look at it either way. Moving on to example number seven now. So the final example to look at is going to be, again, two particles A and B of masses 2 kilograms and 4 kilograms, respectively, are moving towards each other again in opposite directions. And the speeds are given as 3 for A and 2 for B. Um, it says, given that the magnitude of the impulse due to the collision, so again, a on B in that direction, B on A in that direction is going to be 7 Newton seconds. Find the velocity of A after the collision. So if we're looking at A first of all, we know that the impulse of B on A is going to be in that direction. So that's going to be the direction we take. And we want to find, if I call that the velocity of A, and we'll call this one the velocity of B when we get to the second part in a moment. So we know that the impulse is 7, and that is going to equal mass times by the final velocity, which is in the direction we've taken as positive, minus the mass, and again, that's in the opposite direction, so that's minus 3. So you can see that 7 uh, minus the 6 is 1, so the velocity of A is going to be a half. So again, it has rebounded. If we look at particle B now for the second part, we have that the impulse is obviously <coughs> going from A to B will be in that direction. So again, the impulse is going to be four lots of VB, because that is in the same direction we've taken as positive, minus four lots again of minus two, because that velocity was going to the left. So again, we've got seven um, that's going to be plus 8, so minus 1 equals 4VB, so VB is going to be minus 1 quarter. So that's continuing to the left, so that one hasn't rebounded. So that's enough for you now to have a go at exercise 1B. Um, just note that um, exercise 1C is part of the A2 course, where you're looking at momentum and impulse in vector form. So once you've done exercise 1B, you can go to mixed exercise 1, but just ignore any questions that relate to vectors. And they're usually given in the form I and J, where I is the unit vector horizontally and J is the unit vector vertically. So you can still have a go at mixed exercise 1. Just ignore the vector questions if you're doing the AS course. Best of luck.